Good morning to all. Uh, today I would like to present you the current state of my research performed at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris concerning the description of a new species of an echodontid from the Devonian of Morocco. And for those unfamiliar with onychodontids, just a quick reminder, they were uh, predatory marine uh, sarcopter regions found exclusively in the Devonian period, although there are uh, certain remains that could be uh, attributed to onychodonts in the uh, late Silurian. Uh, the most striking feature of their anatomy is this well-developed uh, tooth whorl in the lower jaw, which uh, produce mm, drama dramatic changes also in the brain case uh, arrangement. And as you can see, the size uh, is also variable among the group. You have smaller forms like Strunius from the uh, late Devonian of Germany, which could be also a juvenile, with larger forms like Onychodus, which is by far the uh, best known genus of the, of the group. Uh, but you also have other remains, such as the earliest representatives of the group, such as Buchanodus from the early Devonian of Australia. It is known by disarticulated uh, skull remains, and uh, also forms like Grossius from the Middle Devonian of Spain, known by a single and rather massive skull. Uh, but um, luckily, uh, recently, the discovery of King Minutus from the early Devonian of China has uh, furnished new information on their otherwise poorly ossified brain case and helped settle uh, their phylogenetic position among um, circopter regions. Because indeed, onychodontids have occupied almost every possible position along the basal circopter region tree. They were considered either as the sister groups of the stropodomorphs or in a polytomy with uh, the Rupidistians. But in recent years, a new hypothesis has emerged that consider uh, onychodontids as the closest relatives to silicates. So they form together a sister group by a well-sustained uh, clade. And this is currently the, the, the most um, recent um, hypothesis. Today then, I would like to present uh, thus this new species of an uh, onychodontid from Morocco, which will hopefully um, uh, bring, furnish new information on their morphological disparity, distribution, and phylogenetic interrelationships. So, the material was uh, found in southern Morocco. It was uh, retrieved from the Devonian upcrops of the Tindouf Basin near the Dra River, which runs like this one. And uh, the limestone concretions that housed the fossils were dated as uh, late or middle Ephelian, which is then middle Devonian. And paleogeographically speaking, you can see that the, uh, this species lived in the uh, northern coast of uh, Gondwana, uh, which makes this remains not only the first onychodontid known from Africa, but also the southernmost species of onychodontid retrieved um, so far. Now, the material was collected in 1966 by a combined uh, mission of French and Moroccan paleontologists and was only preliminary described in 1976 by Lemon. Uh, only large bones were then illustrated, such as these dentary or probably maxillary uh, remains, as well as some um, scales. But in 1988, the remains were redescribed by Najat Akesby from the museum and she proposed a reconstruction of the snout uh, using some remains that were not previously figured by Lemon. Uh, but unfortunately, or rather fortunately, she did not assign a new name for this species, even though she pointed out some differences with other known forms, which until today, then, this uh, onychodontid remind, remains as an in depth onychodontid. So, uh, for her publication, Akesby included the fossil remains in resin, and that uh, allowed her to um, dissolve the sediment and restudy the other side of the bones that were uh, hidden by the rocky matrix. But in order to more fully understand the, their anatomy and be able to manipulate the fossils, I removed the resin uh, with acetone for several days and further prepared the remains in order to uh, access more information from these bones. Now, uh, considering the uh, bones that were already, already uh, published and some new ones, you can see that the main 
differences with former reconstructions deals with the arrangement of the skull and the snout bones. In her original publication, Akersby proposed that uh, there was a single nostril um, uh, framed by the anterior tectal, and she considered this bone to be the lacrimal. However, following the course of the lateral lines and very closely looking at the ornamentation of the bones, I was able to propose that this bone, in fact, is a uh, posterior tectal, this here, and I was able to retrieve new bones, such as this postorbital, of the jugal, and certain bones of the nasal, nasal series. Uh, as well, other remains have uh, shown that we might be dealing also with some cheekbones, like this fragment of a squamosal, where the lateral line follows uh, this path. But as you can see, these remains are disarticulated, and it's rather difficult to put them together. It's like doing a puzzle, so to speak. But ver following very closely the course of the lateral lines and the ornamentations, I was able to kind of put the pieces back together and propose these reconstructions. Uh, also, I could in identify several bones, although certain are still uh, debatable. And as you can see, we are dealing with a single individual. Uh, all the bones and the relative size uh, confirms this hypothesis. And as you can see also, we have dealing with a relatively large individual based on the size of the maxilla that I will uh, shortly show you, probably measuring around a meter and a half, although it's difficult to, uh, to be sure for, for certain. Now, we also have some uh, fragments of the maxilla, which is the largest bone found. It is found in two uh, fragments. And as you can see, is, uh, it's rather striking for an onychodon. It has a rounded posterior margin and a straight ventral margin. As you can see also, the uh, teeth are preserved, almost entirely preserved in this anterior fragment. They, are, they rest on a um, thick um, flange of bone, and they are recurved inwards and backwards, which is typical for a large predatory fish. You also see that there is the presence of several pores, maybe associated with the incursion of the lateral line through the maxilla. And we also retrieve some uh, skull roof bones, bones. Following the course of the lateral line, which is very well preserved in the ventral side, I was able to identify the supratemporal, tabular, and lateral extrascapular. But due to their thinness and their um, fragile na nature, the articulation facets and the margins are usually broken, so it's difficult to really be sure where, where, they, sh where they would fit. But I propose a new reconstruction, different from Akersby's, uh, uh, differing mostly by the size of the lateral extrascapular. Unfortunately, the postparietals and the median extrascapular are missing, and these are very character-rich uh, features in order to more fully understand uh, onychodontids' interrelationships, which is a pity. Now, we also retrieve uh, uh, fragments from the right dentary. As you can see, it's incomplete. All the ventral margin is missing. Uh, teeth are very well developed. You see here large teeth uh, join, uh, next to replacement sockets and some evidence of uh, shedding in, some in these teeth. Uh, I think we have the posterior fragment of the dentary, and as you can see, teeth uh, increase in size, approaching the, posterior, the anterior margin of the jaw. Uh, teeth rest on this inner ridge, which is typical of the dentary of onychodontids, and there is there's a presence of small denticles on the uh, labial side, very close to the to this to these teeth, large teeth. Also, the prearticular was preserved. It's a relatively large bone. Although incomplete, the anterior fragment of the uh, bony lamina is also missing. And uh, la lingually, it is ornamented by uh, very small dermal tubercles, which is common for sarcoptic regions, but differs from the ridges well developed in actinistians, for example, and also in stiloictis. Now, we also have some endoskeleton bones. All these both bones were dermal. Um, and, for example, these keratobranchials are very nicely preserved. They show a very thin periosteal um, ossifications uh, pierced by numerous pores, and the inner portion of the bones is hollow, uh, attesting that the um, endochondral ossification was poorly developed, which uh, could uh, explain the lack of brain case uh, elements and the desarticulation of the bones of the skull, which is rather typical for onychodontids. 
And of course, we have some scales. We have numerous scales. They are of typical uh, onychodontid uh, morphology. They are rounded and ornamented on their exposed surface by very small uh, crescent moon or <laughs> horseshoe shaped uh, tubercles. And I also retrieved some denticles from uh, certain palatal bones and gill rackers associated with food intake. Now, what does this new species teach us about uh, morphological evolution of the skull? Well, first you can see that uh, although there are some um, characters shared with other forms, I think the differences are uh, sufficient to uh, create a new species and genus name for this um, new form, which will be published uh, shortly. And for instance, one of the main differences is that, for example, you have in Onychodus and in Struneus a ventral flexure of the maxilla. Uh, the maxilla, as I already told you, is straight and rounded, similar to that of Grossius. But the arrangement of, this, of the bones around the orbit are also different in, from these other, other forms. And I think that could justify that we are dealing with a new species. Uh, also, there are two um, nostrils, one here surrounded by the anterior tectal and the lateral rostral, and a second one uh, located on a notch on the posterior side of this fragment of a lateral rostral. Also, numerous sclerotic ossicles are present, which, is, which are typical for early sarcops and also onychodontids. Now, what about the phylogenetic interrelationships? Well, um, the interrelationships of onychodontids within the group and with other sarcopter regions have, have been deeply studied by uh, Jing Lu from the IVPP in China. And I use her matrix that she very kindly provided to code and place my, my new species. Uh, she retrieved in her formal analysis an, a monophyletic onychodontid group and very deeply nested within this clade uh, as the sister group of coelacanths. Uh, however, when I included my species, the results are less clear. We see that the onychodontids are no longer well supported. Uh, the interrelationships within the group are unresolved. And However, the position as in this clade of onychodontids and actinistians is retained, and no other relationships within the tree are modified. This uh, could be explained by the fragmentary nature of these, uh, these remains, and by the lack of several key structures, such as the brain case or the cheek or, or other bones of the, of the skeleton, that are very interesting in order to you know, understand and call these interrelationships. However, these are just preliminary results. I should, deep, uh, I should look deeper into the, into the remains and try to uh, arrange the matrix in order to more deeply study just this on the interrelationship because I think there might be some data that's, that's been missing. Now, concerning the paleogeographical distributions, you can see that the earliest onychodontids were Gondwanan, and they are found in the eastern part of Gondwana, such as Chimionotus and Buchanotus. And by the middle Devonian, they have uh, already expanded along the northern coast of Gondwana. You find onychodonts in the Middle East, in uh, Spain, southern uh, Laurasia, southern Euro America, sorry, and in this uh, case, in Africa. And by the late Devonian, they have achieved a worldwide distribution with uh, well-known representatives of onychodus found in Australia as well, but also in North America and in Europe, as well as Struneus. So as you can see, this fossil remains uh, represents the first occurrence of um, onychodontids in Africa, but they are also among the southernmost remains of onychodontids found uh, so far. So now to sum up, I, I'm uh, undertaking a new and thorough description of this previously known but yet unnamed species of onychodontid. I think the results might be very interesting. This is the first onychodontid from Africa, which is very, uh, which is very southernly located for a Gondwanan onychodontid. The remains are composed of dermal and endoskeletal uh, bones, which are three-dimensionally preserved, and articulation facets enable a proper reconstruction of the snout and uh, possibly also the skull roof. This is a single, very large individuum, individual, sorry, around one meter and a half. 
but the fragmentary remains um, impedes a proper phylogenetic, phylogenetic uh, reconstructions because we lack features from the cheek and the brain case. This, his phylogenetic resolution uh, is, um, must be very, very clearly undertaking. And I think that I can find a way to place it among the onychodontids with enough confidence. So I thank you very much for all you being here. I also thank uh, Guillaume Lecointe for funding for this Congress and all these other colleagues, and especially uh, Lu Jing for providing her with the matrix. Very used. Thank you very much. Thank you.